yeah, oh, we, yeah. Uh, we didn't see Draymond or Gary downstairs at practice. Um, do you have anything to share about either of their statuses? Uh, Gary practiced today, so um, he's. I don't know what his status is for tomorrow's game, but he's. Um, you know, he's making making strides, and we didn't scrimmage, but we did have some live, you know, half court stuff, and he went through everything. So I don't. I don't have any updates beyond that. And the Draymond stuff, everything is is just private. You know, that's behind the scenes, and I really don't have anything to uh, to comment on on that front. We know, obviously, there's a lot of players to get into a rotation already. And then when GP2 is back, when Draymond is back, you know, it's still up in the air. But you know you do have two more players coming back in. Do you have to start making some real solid decisions there? Or are you thinking about that, realizing you've got even two more coming? How, right. how, what's kind of the mindset with all these things kind of floating around with the rotation? I think about it every day. Um, that is my job, of course, but um, it, it's it's really hard because um, I think I've I've told you guys this, but some years it's just really obvious who your top nine are, and um, and you just roll with those guys, and you know the the uh, the guys ten through fourteen understand roles, and you work with them, and you try to you know fit them in to keep them going, but uh, this year is, is um, very different in that regard, I think. Um, we could we play 13 guys um you know in in the rotation um any one of them is and every one of them is qualified to to be out there and could make the case that they should be out there but you can only play 9 or 10 so um very difficult decisions i had to make one the other night and you know moses only played the 2 minute stretch in the second and moses has has played well for us this year and that was that was difficult. Uh, I talked to him before the game to let him know that was happening. Um, but to your point, we get Gary back, we get Draymond back. Um, those those questions uh, get louder, and and uh, we have to figure that out as a staff. Steve, kind of in that same vein, when when you made a change to go to Brandon instead of Wiggins, you said hopefully sometimes guys need a jolt. How do, Wiggins seems like he's responded yeah. kind of this, the way you wanted him to. What's mm -hmm. been your evaluation of how he's played these last, I think, five or six? Wiggs years? has been great. Um, looks like a different guy. Um, he's uh, attacking the rim. He's getting fouled. He's uh, he looks more fluid, um, shooting the ball. Uh, he's really responded well and uh, was, um, you know, maybe our best player, um, you know, in Denver and. So I'm really thrilled with the way he's he's responded and the way he's playing, and hopefully that continues. Do you like him having him anchor that second unit? Because I mean, the whole second unit has been playing well for you all year, but yeah. having him kind of be that one main guy out there is is that a good role for him, or do you want to see him keep pushing and try to work his way back into the start? Yeah, I mean, I, again, we could we could have this conversation about um, so many guys on our team, um, but um, I think Wiggs has been a nice addition. You know, the way I look at it, Chris and Dario kind of anchor that, that second group. They're, they're the constants, um, and we've tried different people around them. But those two guys um, in every lineup combination fare really well. Um, so the, the, that, that unit is, is really based around them. But Wiggs has uh, really given that group another attacker and a, a post-up guy. You saw in Denver he scored uh, three or four hoops right at the rim. Um, and that's what we need from Wiggs. But he can do that with the starting group, too. So if he keeps playing well, then he very well could end up back in the starting lineup. But, you know, we're just kind of taking it day by day. You probably saw uh, Kaminga wasn't, I don't think he was complaining, but he was on the borderline of that about how much game he has that he can show. And then sometimes he's right back on the bench. He'd like to play more, I'm sure. Uh, how much communication do you have with him? Uh, just about that, I'm sure it's continuous. But... Uh, I'm sure you want all your players to want to play more, but yeah. sometimes you do see in him that he does different stuff. How much is it on your mind? Like, I really have to get make sure he plays. But then you've got obviously the roster crunch too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's we talk every day. We we watched a bunch of film today together. Um, so I'm thrilled with JK's uh, development. Um, I think um, what he's doing a better job of right now is just getting the ball out of his hands quickly um, when it comes to him. So it's a it's a quick swing swing when we have an advantage. I've I've seen him, 
had five or six assists over the last three games where he's caught it and immediately swung it to Steph or Clay for an open shot. And those plays early in the season, he wasn't seeing. He was catching and holding, and our offense was um, getting stopped. And so um, plays like that, he's starting to improve upon. Um, there's still um, a lot that goes into to winning. Um, you know, I don't mind those comments at all. Every, every guy wants to play, and J.K. is a really talented guy. Um, but um, you know, I, every game I have to read the game. You know, and and Wiggs Wiggs was um, our best player. He's playing, you know, in that position. Um, you know, we we decided to go with Wiggs down the stretch, and um, you know, there was um, that was a pretty. Those are easy decisions um, for me. So. Um, the game before, I think J.K. finished and he was playing great. And it's like it's just going to vary from game to game for everybody, you know. Um, and that's just where our team is right now, where J.K. is too. One one thing that he said in that story is that sometimes he comes out of the game not knowing what he did wrong. Yeah. I guess how much teaching has to happen in those moments for him in particular compared to maybe someone else? Um, yeah, more with the young players for sure. And so, um, you know, a, a day like today, we had yesterday off. So a day like today, I show him those reasons. I show him the plays that we need him to improve upon and do something different. And, and so he's still a young player with very little experience, you know, as foundationally. And so there's a, a lot of plays that, um, you know, you just have to show them where the cut is, where the box out is, where uh, the, the, the right position to be in is, because all these things um, matter when it comes down to a one possession game like most of our games are. And so you show them, show them on film and, you know, you move on to the next day. And he's done a great job of really uh, embracing coaching and, um, and we're going to continue to coach him and, and help him you know, be in the right spots and make the right plays. I asked you this before. Um, I don't know if we could get a diff different answer this time, but can you play Kaminga and Wiggins together more, or is that just the what the equation? It doesn't work with those two on the floor together. I, I think um, I, it's something we um, uh, will will try um, with some um, maybe some new people around them. Um, their numbers are not good together, frankly. They're very redundant. Um, so, um, you know, the, 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 the tape and the numbers um, haven't been great. So, but we recognize, too, that we have a level that we need to get to to really compete at the highest level. And if those two guys can coexist on the floor, it does give us an elevated athleticism um, and, and elevated potential. But we have to find the right combination uh, of people around I, those two. Uh, still is, is there, it's evident. Uh, I think the whole league is trying to figure this out right now. And that's why you, you just can't pay attention, you know, to what everybody's saying on the outside. Uh, it's not like there are uh, a bunch of teams that um, have been playing consistent basketball. There are a handful. And then basically everybody else is trying to figure it out. And uh, Golden State, like us, has had some really good moments where they've looked like you know, a little bit of who they've been, and they've had some moments where they're trying to figure it out. Uh, we feel like we're in a similar area. They still play a, an incredibly unique style with Perry and Thompson and all the movement uh, that they have. Uh, it's different than your typical spread, pick, and roll uh, basketball, so you have to be totally locked in and focused. And, and then that's just a great environment to play there. I think it's a good uh, way to kick off this road trip. Um, because you're going to have to play, you know, good, consistent basketball all the way through. Variable uh, from a life experience and basketball experience, uh, it was incredible. Everything that, uh, that I had hoped for. Obviously, we, we wanted to um, come back, you know, with a goal, but competition is tough. It's tough in the NBA and it's tough in FIBA, uh, and I think that helps you grow. Uh, you know, you you get humbled and. Uh, you know, you, you have to, to figure out, you know, how to do better. And I'm looking forward to this summer and, and have that continuity with the staff. I really enjoyed my time with Steve. I had gotten to know him, you know, over the years, you know, particularly when he's doing TV and head coaches' meetings. Um, I really admire him. A great player, him. obviously one of the best shooters of all time, if not the best. So, um, you know, he, he presents a lot of problems. And uh, I think the work we negotiate on 
our defensive end is trying to stop them in their offense. So uh, they worked the rules they're doing today. And we to shoot around and you know, try to try to prepare for them. <laughs> Listen, I knew it was gonna happen, but I had to share that story just because we know how and we know how passionate UD is. You know, all of us who've been around him, who you know, he really talked to UD. You know, he's really passionate about us. You know, he's really passionate about UD. He's, ha he's passionate about you know who talks about us, how they talk about us. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys that we don't listen to the noise, but he articulated to us. Uh, in his own way, so you know how that goes. But you know, it's one of those things where we really always gonna be upset. But I feel like it was a great story to share, just because you know it just came at his his utmost, like motivating, but slash like just him being himself and just explaining it. But, you know, we have no. I, I respect. We all respect Bill Russell for what he's done for us uh, as players. You know, and as you know, like, you know all stuff he had to go through. So, uh, just to clear that air uh, before we decided to talking about that. You know, we, we we all know we respect that man. You know, Bama, some players have New Year's resolutions, some don't. Uh, where do you sort of lie in that, and is there something you specifically want, you want to see out of yourself and the team going into 2024? Uh, you know, my resolution is just keep trying to be consistent. You know, that's the hardest thing to do in life. It's the hardest thing to do to do as basketball player, baseball player, no matter what your profession is or what your occupation is. Uh, you know, the hardest thing to do is be consistent, getting up every day, you know, wanting to, well, for y'all, wanting to write a story, finding a story, having to go through all that. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, for me, it's, it's being consistent. And Caleb, obviously, as we end you know, 2023 pretty soon, is there any New Year's resolutions that you might have, not just for yourself, but maybe for the team as a whole, what you're looking for? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we always can get better at it, you know, a lot of things. Uh, I don't have any really things specific, but, uh, you know, just, like I said, just, I mean, just paying attention to detail and just, you know, um, try to take advantage of every game. And, uh, you know, it's just a, another year going to do what we love, you know what I mean? So just not taking advantage of that and, uh, you know, continue to count blessings.